here with the Digital Digest and today I wanted to share a quick comparison between the Microsoft Surface Pro 8 in the Core i5 and Core i7 configurations. Now both are based around Intel's 11th gen Ultrabook chipset that has been on the market for quite some time. I've reviewed both thoroughly in other 2-in-1s and Ultrabooks and the question really becomes which one is right for you and a lot of you have been asking. So pricing and specifications. The Core i5 on the left is 1400, the Core i7 is 1900. Both have 16 gigs of RAM. This has a 256 gig SSD. This has a 512 gig SSD. And the reason I have a 3D Mark uh, Time Spy score up for all of you is because it really does reflect that the difference is marginal at best. And in real world performance, you will not be able to tell the difference in day-to-day -day tasks or even in gaming, photo, or video editing. The things that I think are most commonly going to be done with these machines, there will not be a tangible difference between the two. Battery life is the same. One is not really getting hotter than the other. You might expect that from the i7, but they're both pretty uh, subdued. And when it comes to the balance of the chassis, things are identical. Same 13-inch uh, display, same resolution, same ability to switch between 60 and 120 hertz. Uh, they both have the same, uh, you know, full HD 1080p webcam, 10 megapixel camera on the back capable of 4K uh, recording. Uh, they both, of course, work beautifully with the signature keyboard and new slim pen. And that's one of the reasons I will say, if you do care about what you're spending, absolutely go with the Core i5. Uh, if budget is a total non-issue and you want to squeeze every ounce of performance out of your Surface Pro 8, then go ahead and get the i7. I think the glaring issue here is more about what you could potentially do with that money you're saving with the i5. That easily, of course, pays for the $280 US that this keyboard uh, plus pen costs. Uh, additionally, that money could go towards purchasing an external NVMe drive now that we do have uh, Thunderbolt. Uh, support. You don't have to go with Thunderbolt, but these are good options. Um, Sabrent is uh, one manufacturer that I cover a lot. Of course, Samsung is another uh, very reputable one. I also love this little um, rugged two terabyte drive, which isn't Thunderbolt, a little more versatile for that reason, because it'll work with the Thunderbolt connection on the Surface Pro 8s. And then, of course, with other PCs that don't have Thunderbolt, because most desktops do not have Thunderbolt uh, connectivity. So those are just some ideas. Also Thunderbolt docks. I feel like that's another area. If you save the money going with the i5, you know, a couple hundred dollars towards buying a Thunderbolt dock is a really good investment. These are all about portability, but eventually they need to get docked somewhere, whether it's at home or the office or both. Uh, if you're not working from home, then having a Thunderbolt dock, I think, is one of the best elements of this new generation besides the change in design, slimming of bezels, expanded uh, display, and of course, brand new webcam. It, the Thunderbolt connectivity is a game changer. It actually puts the Surface Pro on even keel with basically all of the Ultrabooks that it's always tried to take on, but always come up short. And the only selling point was of course the form factor and the pen input being pretty much the best on the market when it comes to uh, PC inking in at least a two-in-one. Now with Thunderbolt, things are a little bit different. One other thing I will point out is that even though I have been saying the displays are the same, I have noticed a little bit of variation. I'm not sure that will come across in this video, but it seems like the i5, oddly enough, settings are identical here. Both are set to best performance. Brightness is at 100%. The i5, for some reason, seems brighter than the i7. So I'm not sure if that's panel variation or I've missed something, but something I want to mention that, again, I'm not sure it's going to come across. It looks like it's going to come across because it looks like right here things are a little bit blown out, but that's just because uh, the display is a little bit brighter um, on the i5 for whatever reason, even though they are both at 100% brightness, as you can see, so and at best performance. Either way, uh, just wanted to put that out there. Uh, pen input on both is excellent. The best you will get. Uh, from any two-in-one on the market other than Samsung, pretty much, is what I would say. So yes, uh, the pen input will best 
uh, HP and Lenovo based on what I've experienced thus far. But boy, you are absolutely paying for every ounce of that performance, even if you go with the i5. Uh, with regard to the 8 gig model, I don't really recommend going with that unless you plan on only using this for productivity. Uh, that doesn't mean it won't be able to do things. It will, uh, but I feel like 16 gigs is a good baseline here in 2021 uh, for anything that you plan on using uh, for more than you know a year. So if you plan on this thing lasting and really you know using it for a while, do yourself a favor, even if you don't think it think you need it now, you likely will be happy that you have it in the future. Um, and remember, 256 gigs of storage versus 512, that savings should afford you the ability to go ahead and pick up um, an NVMe drive. And a lot of people ask me, if I buy one of these, will it be as fast as what's inside the machines? And when it comes to practical applications like photo, video editing, um, even running software, the answer is yes. The throughput on Thunderbolt is enough that it will feel and seem like you are running uh, said software right from the surface itself. So don't worry about that. And that's why I think um, unless you know you absolutely must have the 512 or one terabyte, don't buy the farm because that drive that I keep bringing any of them into frame will outlive the Surface Pro 8 and you'll end up using that with your next laptop or computer of choice in general. So again, everything is identical. Um, a, a very slight edge goes to the i7. I don't think it warrants the price difference. Hopefully that's uh, become abundantly clear. Uh, I have included links uh, to both of these models in the description and I hope this clears up any um, questions or confusion regarding the i5 versus the i7. And for those of you wondering if the i5 is fanless, I mean, both of these have remained really quiet under load. They both kick on fans. So at least I've heard and felt blowing uh, from each of them. So, uh, you know, that the concept of going for the i5 because it's going to be cool and quiet, I don't think you have to have that concern with either of them, at least from my experience, which is only a few days now but enough that I can at least uh, send you in the right direction. But both are great. Windows 11 seems pretty solid so far. Hopefully they eventually give us a patch um, that allows the Surface Pro 8 to uh, take advantage of a dynamic refresh rate so that it can determine when we need that 120 versus 60 hertz because really the 120 outside of inking and the very light gaming you can do with these is kind of lost in the mix in my opinion and is just a battery killer. Uh, but that's just my opinion, of course. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe and please stay safe. Later.